at the recent opening ceremony to the Olympics in France, there was a display which has been interpreted by most to be a deliberate inversion of the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. The Greek word disciples simply means students. But tradition makes it known that it was specifically the twelve apostles who were gathered around that table on that faithful night. It was the evening Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given up for you. And taking the chalice likewise, giving blessing, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Why is this significant, that the Olympic opening ceremony would use overtly sexualized imagery? to invert this core event. Why is it significant at this hour? I can easily imagine my secular colleagues saying, well, it was simply avant-garde artists being avant-garde artists. I know that before I was convinced and persuaded of the truth of Christianity's claims. Before I had a personal encounter with Jesus of Nazareth, I myself may have even made such an observation. And yet, had the same display deliberately inverted symbolism associated with Islam, there would be vast outrage. Perhaps even blood. Had the symbolism of Judaism, and I would honestly state here, all depictions of the Last Supper, which was a Passover Seder, is Jewish symbolism. But had there been a perceived direct inversion of the symbolism of Judaism, then surely there would have been deafening outrage. There has been an extraordinary response from fellow believers in the person of Jesus. And yet... I will freely confess that I have been surprised to see a lack of mobilizing to hold the Olympic Committee more fully to account. We must acknowledge that we ourselves are called to be witnesses of that love that was experienced that last night. Or was it really the first of nights? It was the institution of a new priesthood and a new temple. God walking among us had instituted the example of the highest ethic of love. Thomas Jolly, the artist behind this display, claims that it never was supposedly of the Last Supper. Instead of invoking Leonardo da Vinci, it was meant to really invoke a pagan celebration depicting Dionysus, god of revelry, god of wine. I highly doubt that this is the case, given the additional imagery of a golden calf and of a pale horseman at the event, and the fact that all video of this event has been practically expunged from the internet. 
But let us assume that this was the case. Remember what Jesus said before he ascended into heaven. Go forth into all nations, making disciples of all peoples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Why is it this has been allowed to happen? We could make angry posts online. We can speak about this in our little corners, our little boxes, digitally or socially. Or we can make disciples of all nations meaning students of all nations. Christianity never spread by the edge of the sword. It spread by martyrdom. It spread by witness. The word martyrium in Greek means witness. Now, many died because of their witness, but that's not what the word originally meant. Because people bore testimony to what Jesus had accomplished for them. It changed the whole culture. A pagan culture dedicated to the principle, not just of honoring the natural elements, but regrettably, the viewing of the human person as simply a slave of the divine or else expendable. Compared with this new temple, new priesthood imagery of the Eucharist, the Last Supper, in which humanity are called children of the divine, children of God, are called priests, prophets, kings and queens in their baptism and invited to receive everlasting love and to love one another with that same self-sacrificial love with which they have been loved. If the world has become more pagan, with all due respect to my neo-pagan friends, of whom there are many, but if the world has become more pessimistic about the view of the human being's relationship to the divine. And so hypersexualized and confusing this with among the most sacred images of our history, particularly without regard to the sensitivity of others then it is up to us not merely to point the finger and to blame, of which there is great cause. We must call the Olympic Committee to greater account. We must do a lot more than that. We must teach. We must shepherd. We must witness That doesn't necessarily mean beating people over the head with verses. But it does mean engaging the culture without hesitation. Letting our neighbors who are unaware of the truth claims of Christ know how our lives have been transformed and inviting them to encounter that same love the way the earliest Christians did. When they became a safety net for the poor, as they themselves were poor, by giving what little they had. 
by becoming parents to unwanted children who are often left exposed to the elements by treating the elderly with respect along with the disabled, women, and other marginalized communities. How do we re-Christianize an unchristian world, even an anti-Christian world? We become saints. We become saints. Look at the saints of the Old and New Testaments. They are not perfect people. Instead, they know that they are imperfect people. To put it quite bluntly, sinners, as we all are, rescued by love. We're willing to show that generosity to their neighbor. The answer is to be prophets who will call out injustice where there is injustice. This mockery was an injustice. But also, but also are willing in good conscience to give voice in an age which has become so polarized to what God is intending to say. And what is God intending to say at this hour? Where is God's message to the world? Is it not, this is my body? Is it not, this is my blood? If there was a golden calf which people worshipped that opening ceremony at the Olympics, it is only because we have turned away from golden calves to new idols. We must first remove the idols from our own heart. And then, filled with the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, the breath of God, he who proceeds from the Father and the Son. It is then we will be able to have it said of us what the pagans said of the earliest Christians. My, how they love each other. And then we will be able, like Peter, like Paul, like Priscilla and Achilla, like Mary Magdalene, like Johanna, like Esther, like Deborah, even like Moses, we will be able to be ones through whom God will challenge the dark powers of this world and hold them to account with the power of greater love. As it is written, perfect love casts out all fear. It is a shameful and evil thing the Olympic Committee did. Even if you are an advocate for inclusivity, and are a more progressively minded person. Such an open assault on this most seminal cornerstone of Christian worship was and is beyond this disrespectful. But of greater significance at this hour is how do we answer it? Do we answer this with rage alone? Accusation justifiably alone? 
or do we begin to tell people the story they think they already know, but long ago forgot? The gods who loved humanity. That he entered into our story, became a man. took our offenses to the cross and offered a new vision of love, conquering over death by his bodily resurrection, the third day. Instituting a kingdom where the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And to put it bluntly, yes, destroying the very real works of a very real devil. How are they to know this? Unless they have first heard. People mock things that they either do not understand or they think they already understand. Let us show them with extraordinary mercy, but incredible fortitude in not backing down. What it means to be a true student of the one who said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. I forgive the Olympic Committee for their sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I forgive those who have joined in their mockery. However, I do think that their senseless and bestial Assaults on the person of Jesus of Nazareth must be put a stop to so that such, I will call it what it is, such a blasphemy, leading souls to spiritual death may never occur again. With responsibility but firmness, with understanding and clarity, as well as courage, let us truly be students of the Christ. Amen. Amen.